Sunday School Leader. Thanks so much for watching this week. I apologize for the delay in getting this video out this week, uh, but it's been one of those weeks, and I know you guys have those weeks probably more often than I do, but just in the last three weeks, we have had six deaths, either in our church or relatives of our church members, and so it's just been one of those weeks. And then on top of that, just about 20 minutes ago, I got back from a uh, overnight staff retreat. And so trying to plan out stuff for the next year. It's just been a very busy week. But anyway, that goes right along with our lesson this week. We're in the unit that's entitled Simplicity, Finding Contentment in a Busy Life. The lesson this week is lesson five. It's called A Slower Pace. It's out of Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11, and chapter 31, verses 12 through 17. And the point of the lesson is that rest is a gift from God. Well, the end of September is almost here. Just a little over three months from now, we'll be in the year 2020. And that used to sound so futuristic, didn't it? Uh, I remember as an elementary school child back in the early 70s, uh, we got this little pamphlet newspaper type thing called the Weekly Reader. And I don't even know if that thing still exists or not, but I remember an article in that Weekly Reader, I think I was about fifth or sixth grade, and it talked about because of the advent of the computer and the paperless office that was to come and how much more efficient we would be, that there would be so much more time for leisure. Uh, but what happened? That didn't happen, did it? In fact, here's what happened. Yes, computers came along, decreased in price, increased in efficiency, and it increased our efficiency as well, meaning we didn't have more leisure time, but that meant we could produce more in the same amount of time. And so if your company didn't do that, other companies would, the competition would. So we just got busier and busier and did more and more uh, with less and less often. You guys who are as old as I am will probably remember that test pattern. You remember the test pattern that would come on? You know, the news in, in my area at least would come on from 10 to 10.30 and there might be a 30 minute or an hour show. And after that, sometimes maybe about 10.30 or 11 o'clock at night, you'd hear the national anthem playing, and then that test pattern would show. You know, we don't see that anymore. I can't remember the last time I saw a test pattern on the TV. Here's the thing, we do more with less. Even our television stations I was just talking about, they're now 24 seven. And the downtime of that, it's just not dead time, it's full of infomercials. And here's the thing, we are just so busy, we, over enroll our kids with the with the most recent activities the most popular activities and also now thanks to our phones we're able to be reached out and touched wherever we are pretty much across the globe at any time so there's there's hardly any downtime here's a sad thing i think we're as guilty in the church about that as anything aren't we you know we keep adding programs events activities meetings and it will wear you out. Here's the thing, where is the rest? Where is the rest in all this? Well, you have to be intentional about it. If you go with the flow, you're gonna be busy, busy, busy. Because the Sabbath rest, it, like I said, it doesn't come naturally. We're, we're wired today to be as productive as possible. Even in a downtime of, let's say, just watching TV at home, I find myself, I think I mentioned this several weeks ago on another prep talk, I can be watching a movie or a television show with my wife and I'll see an actor appear on the screen. I think that person looks familiar. So I grab out my phone and I'm typing in the IMDB uh, app, looking up the current show. Who's that actor? Oh, it's that person. Oh, that's right. They starred in such and such show. And so even as we're watching TV, we're scrolling through Facebook or looking at IMDB or whatever. It just constant, just, just no downtime. We're, we're multitasking all the time. Well, here's the thing. In the creation narrative, in Genesis chapters 1 and 2, God created in six days, and then he rested, or he ceased work on day seven. So God set an example for us. He didn't need to rest. He's omnipotent, means all-powerful, means he doesn't, his energy does not deplete like ours does. So he didn't take a nap on day seven, he ceased from work. Now, your lesson material has some great explanation, great commentary 
on, on these two passages that we have out of Exodus. But I want to touch on a, a couple of things that this lesson brings out. I mean, or questions that this lesson brings out that I don't think are answered in the lesson material. So let's look at a couple of those. And these are questions that probably you have, or I'm, I'm pretty sure somebody in your class is going to have that this lesson might bring up. So first of all, what does the New Testament say about the Sabbath? All right, well, we can look in Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. It says, Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in question of food or drink or regard to a festival or new moon or a Sabbath. For these are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Acts 20, verse 7, the church starts meeting on the first day of the week. And why is that? Did they just give up? Did they just change that on their own? Well, no. You got to remember, who, who was that first church? They were Jewish people who had converted to Christianity. They were Jewish Christians. So they probably continued meeting in the temple and started preaching Christ there. But together, then they would meet on the first day of the week, on what we would call on Sunday. In Acts chapter 15, the Jerusalem Council, uh, you remember they, were, they met together to give some instructions to the Gentiles, to the new Gentile believers, uh, things to do, not to do, because there were some that said they had to be circumcised and you know, all that. And here's what they came up with. They came up with a few things, but it did not include worshiping on the Sabbath. Okay? Uh, how about Romans 14.5? Paul tells those who observe the Sabbath not to condemn those who don't. So if, if it were a, a continuation, if it were, a, were something that they needed to do, I don't think Paul would have said that. Galatians chapter 4, verses 10 and 11, Paul rebukes the Gentile believers for thinking uh, that God wanted them to observe certain days. Okay. Also, when Jesus and the disciples were walking through the field of grain and they picked some of those heads of grain, the Pharisees criticized them because why? They did that on the Sabbath, and what they did was, was considered working on the Sabbath. And what did Jesus reply out of Mark chapter 2, verse 27? He said, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, meaning it wasn't to be a burden. It was to be enjoyed. It was it, The Sabbath was not to be worshipped. It was to be for man's benefit. So that's kind of what the New Testament has to say. Just a more practical question, though, and I had this question posed to me this week. Well, is it okay to go out to eat lunch on Sunday? You know, are, are we uh, breaking the Sabbath? Are we possibly uh, preventing other people from going to church? Are we making them break the Sabbath by doing that? Well, first of all, the Sabbath isn't Sunday, literally. If you know Spanish, what's the Spanish word for Saturday? Sabado, just like Sabbath. So the, 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 literally the Sabbath is that seventh day. It is Saturday. So if we base this question, is it okay to go out and eat lunch on Sunday? If we base that on the thought of, is it, are we breaking the Sabbath? Well, I would say definitely not, just based on those New Testament verses that we looked at. But if it, you're basing it on, am I keeping others from going to church? Well, that's a possibility, especially in, in decades previous to ours. Uh, but there's so many churches today that offer early service, late service, evening service, Saturday night service. Uh, and there's so many opportunities for, for people to go to church just, you know, other than the 11 o'clock Sunday morning hour. So here's what I want to encourage you to do. If you do eat out, don't snarl your nose on those who want to go home and think it's wrong. And if you think it's wrong to go out, you know, that's your decision. Don't snarl your nose uh, at people who, who go out and eat. But if you do go out and eat on Sunday... And I think probably a lot of our church does tip generously. All right, uh, Christians can be known as some of the most stingy people, and it's not being a good steward; it's being stingy. And we're not called to be stingy; we're called to be generous people. So let's not do that. Here's Jim's quote. All right, you prevent more people from coming to church by being a demanding customer and a stingy tipper on Sunday than you do just going out and eating at a restaurant after church. All right, here's a couple of takeaways from, from this week. First of all, our bodies, our minds, our souls all benefit from rest. That's how we're designed. We're not designed to multitask 24-7. We need a break. Also, busyness does not equate with godliness. Think back to the story of Mary and Martha. 
That should tell it to you right there. Busyness does not equate with godliness. Also, a few things from, from Rick Warren. Um, and the question is, what are you supposed to do on your Sabbath? He has three things that he says. Rest your body. In fact, I've heard this said many times. One of the most spiritual things you can do is take a nap. Okay, rest your body. Refocus your spirit. That means that you worship. Okay, A Sabbath rest does not include a vacation from God. So if you go to the lake or do all these recreational activities on your Sabbath, uh, that's not your vacation from God. You may be re-energizing your body a little bit, but not your soul, not your spirit. All right. Also, recharge your emotions. Do something that restores and re-energizes you. Is that taking a nap? Is that your hobby? Is that a sport? Whatever that is. All right, next week, we're in the last lesson of this series. It's called Uncomplicated Relationships out of 1 Thessalonians. I appreciate you guys very much. And, um, hey, if you disagree with, with what I've said, I'd appreciate some either uh, feedback on the YouTube comment page or on the Facebook page that I have, or um, just an email, and all that's coming up, how you can contact me there. So I appreciate you guys. Don't forget, pray for your class.